Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In the last video, I went over how to use the delay command and kind of implied that you shouldn't use the delay command. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. There are cases where you don't care if the processing just stops. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use delays without using the delay command. So in other words, we'll be able to stop something from happening for three seconds while other stuff is still occurring. I'm going to put a link in the video, if I can remember how, that will take you to the video previous that goes over the delay command. It might not be a bad idea to watch that one first. It's video number 203. I'm going to use the exact same layout as the last video. And I'm actually starting this video with the file that I ended with in the last video. I'm going to delete these two timers down here. And I'm going to take timer zero and have it have a 50 millisecond interval. Now so we can see the code, I'm going to move this out of the way. We'll leave BO um, button zero alone for right now. It has the delay in it. Uh, we'll get to that a little later. But now, instead of having timers and delay functions, we're going to use variables to kind of symbolize our delays. So you can see I've added three variables here. I'm going to change the name on them to delay 0, delay 1, and delay 2. And those will still relate. Delay 0 will relate to number field 0, delay 1 to number field 1, and delay 2 to number field, number field 2. So as I said earlier, the timer zero is going to do something every 50 milliseconds. And this is the old code. We're going to replace it with this code. So every 50 milliseconds, we're going to have these three variables down here increment by one. And if delay zero, the first one down here, is greater than 10, we're going to have it increment the number zero value. So 50 milliseconds is the interval, so 10 of those would be 500 milliseconds, or every half second this N0 should increment. And we're going to do something similar with N1 and N2, only we're going to double it every time, or add 10 every time. So delay or N1 should increment every second, and N2 should increment every 1.5 seconds. So in order just to make sure I didn't get anything wrong here, we'll run this in debug. So I still have that timer disabled by this button. So we'll start it here. And you can see this one's counting up fast, not as fast, and even slower down here. And this one should always be about twice what that one is, so that makes sense. So now what we have is essentially, they look like timers, but they're delay functions. So this is going to delay. Each one of these is delaying. So in the first video, if we had this one, this top one set as a delay, whichever one was set as the longest delay, in our case, I think it was three seconds, they all were three second timers. But you could see in this one, they were all functioning differently. On the new text button, we have this delay set for th three seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this in debug again. And it's mainly because I forgot to show you that. If I start this timer going, you can see these are counting, but since we have this old delay in here, when I hit that in, these all stop. And that more simulates what we were seeing in the last um, video. So in this one, we're going to comment out the delay. So every time we press this, this is going to increment. So I start it. And you can see these are going, and then I can increment this, and it doesn't stop these from working. Whereas before, when we had an actual delay, they wouldn't continue to count when we were doing another function. Now, I want to show it even further. What we're going to do is we're going to, when we press this button, we're going to have a three-second delay before the number is incremented in this field. And so now, whenever we want to create another delay without using the delay command, we'll just have to create another variable. And I've made the variable delay 3. 
So now in the timer, we have to add another line, delay three dot val plus equal one. So in other words, we're going to increment the delay three every 50 milliseconds. We'll also have to add something down here, whereas if delay three is greater than 60, which is three seconds, then we'll increment n3 value, just like what we wanted to do, and we'll set it back to zero, just like in these, so that way it will happen again. But it's not really going to work. I'm going to run it like this, but we don't want the timer to be in control and of having this increment here. We want the button to be in control, and right now, every time it hits 60, it's going to turn over, and it's going to count up, and it's going to increment it all on its own. It will also increment it when we hit the button. So it's going to increment it in two different ways, but it's not going to work like we want it to work. But I'm going to run it anyway just to show. So now when I start the timer, after three seconds, since this is counting up, it counted. If I hit the button, it counts, just like what we thought, and then it also goes up every three seconds. So now we want to take the control away from the timer itself and move it to this button. And we're going to do that by having this button set the delay 3 value to 0. And by doing that, the button, as long as we don't have the timer set it to 0, the button will count up and will continue to count up until we press it here. So now down in this code, we have this greater than 60. So if it's greater than 60, we want it to increment. Well, since we're not going to be setting it to zero like we were only when we press this, we don't want it to increment when it hits 61, 62, 63. It's just going to increment really fast. So we're going to change this quite a bit. It's going to say if delay 3.val equals 60, so it's only going to happen if it's equal to 60. If it continues to count up, it won't do it anymore. And we're not going to set this to zero. I've left it on here and I've commented out because we're going to allow D3 to count up past 60. The first time we hit this button and set and turn on the timer, it will count up because this is going to tell it to count and we will it will go to one after three seconds. But then it shouldn't do it again unless we press this button. So now when I hit the timer, when this hits three, this should go to one, and it does. But it shouldn't go again when we hit six, and it doesn't. So I'll press this when we hit 10. Now when it hits about 13, it should go to two, and it did. But at 16, it shouldn't. So now we're close, but if I keep pressing this button, You can see that it's not incrementing because this keeps setting it back to zero. So, and maybe that is what you want. Maybe you want it every time you press that button, it doesn't do anything for three seconds. And if you press it, so that could be an outcome. But what if you want it to make sure that it times out, that after three seconds, it, this goes up and then you're able to press the button again? For that, we'll use the TSW command. The TSW command disables a device or an object. In this case, after we press the button, we're going to set the value to zero, this delay three, and then we're going to disable this button. And then what we'll have to do though is after the three seconds is up and this is increment, we'll have to enable the button. So we're going to come back down to here again. and we'll enable that button. So now when I press timer zero, you'll see everything will count. We still have this going to one, but I'm just doing that for the, for the video. What you could do is you could take this initial value and make it higher, or the initial value of that um, delay three field, that um, variable that we put on there. And we'll, we'll do that at the end. So this went to one, and now you'll notice when I push it, it'll go green. 
but now I can't push it again. I'm clicking on it, it's not going. But now I can push it again. And every three seconds now, we'll get that timer, it'll enable that, and it'll work really well. And this allows us to do multiple things with delays without using the delay and without locking up the display. Now the delay three here, all I'd have to do is set the initial value to 60 or something, well, 60 is probably not good because that's what would set it. So something above 60. And then once you've done that, the first time you start it, it won't do, it won't increment this that after that three seconds because it'll already be at 80. It won't be able to do it until you press the button and set it back to zero. So now when I press this timer and start, this shouldn't go to one at the three second point. And you can see it doesn't. But when I click that, after three seconds, it should go to one. And so now it's working pretty much like I had planned. But there are cases where maybe you didn't want to disable the button because you want it to pause, like a watchdog timer, let's say. This isn't going to trigger as long as this button is pushed every three seconds or something like that. There's lots of uses for um, doing it this type of timing. It's called asynchronous because it all runs in one way. It's not really asynchronous because when I click this button, it runs this command and it doesn't run these, but this command just runs so fast that you can't tell that it ran. I hope that shows how to use delays without using delay. And if there's any questions, put them down in there and I can always do a third video on this. The next video I'm planning to do is going to be a little bit on animations. I had a user ask for this or a comment in the YouTube channel, and I thought it would be interesting. And I don't really have my video camera set up in the shop, so it's something I can do in the debug window and show you how to do it. So I'm going to do that next, and then I'm continuing to build out. So pretty soon I'll make some videos with the camera again, showing the actual display and interfacing with some real-life applications. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.